Hi, my name is Ellis Michaels, and I was diagnosed with Bichette's disease in 1997 at the age of 16. In this video, I'm going to tell you about some Bichette's disease resources. Um, these are places where you can get information about Bichette's, places to um, connect with other people that have the disease, and just, um, just general resources to help you um, make sense of this fucked up, horrible illness that uh, none of us asked for. So let's get right to it. Um, the first thing I'm going to mention is Facebook groups. Now, these have been a game changer for me. For years, like I said, I was diagnosed in 1997, and there was no social media. There was no, you know, no support groups for Bichette's and stuff like that. And I felt so fucking alone. Like, just, it, it was just awful, the loneliness. And um, Facebook groups have allowed me to connect with th literally thousands of people with Bichette's all over the world. And now of those thousands, I've made dozens and dozens of really, really good friends. Um, some, some of them very, very close friends that I, I talk to almost daily. Um, so if you're on Facebook, just search for uh, groups for Bichette's. There's uh, the Bichette Syndrome Society. There's, uh, there's a one called Blue Dragonfly. There's a bunch of them. There's a bunch of um, there's a bunch of great Facebook groups. There's a men's only group. There's a women's only group. There's there's something for everybody. Um, so that's that's the first resource that I, I has for me has been just invaluable as far as connecting with other people that have the disease. Another good resource is Reddit. Um, if you are somebody who uses Reddit, which I am, um, in fact I've been I've been using Reddit for a long time. And in 2015 when um, the Bichettes decided to come out of remission and clawed up my legs, I, uh, I went on Reddit and I looked for a Bichette subreddit and I was surprised to find that there wasn't one. So I created one. And now we've got, a, oh, we're, we're creeping up on a thousand subscribers um, or readers or whatever they, whatever they call it on, on Reddit. Um, there's tons of great posts. It's a great place to ask questions. Uh, if you're already on Reddit, I, I strongly uh, suggest subscribing to the Bichette subreddit tons of information there. You got questions, feel free to ask them, everything else. Um, another place, another good Bichette's resource is podcasts. There's, a, there's, a, there's not many of them out there. And um, once again, I, I realized that there wasn't um, many Bichette's podcasts. So I started my own Bichette's Disease Uncensored, uh, which is, you know, that's tied in with this YouTube uh, or Odyssey or whatever you're watching this on. Um, it's tied in with, with that channel. And it's uh, my, the podcast. Just I, I, I really put a lot of research and thought into the episodes, um, and you know I, I try to. I, I've been living with this disease for like 25 years. I've researched the hell out of it. I, I know all kinds of way more about it than any anyone ever should. Um, so I, you know, I'm creating these videos and podcasts and stuff like that to um, to, to to pass that along to you because I know uh, I, I, there's been times when I. I I was just lost with, you know, I didn't know, I didn't know shit. So hope, hopefully um, they can help you. So there's Bichette's Disease Uncensored podcast, which is, which is mine. And then uh, there's another good one. It's called Rising from the Illness. Um, I don't know if it's about Bichette's specifically, but the woman that, that does it is, uh, has Bichette's disease. I, I, I went on the podcast a few months ago. Lovely woman, wonderful British woman. Um, so that, that's another good one to check out, Rising from the Illness. It's on uh, Spotify and Wherever else, uh, you know, wherever else podcast you listen to podcasts, books, books is the next one. Um, I'm a big reader, obviously, and uh, I, I like to read. Now, when I was diagnosed, there was only I could only find two books about Bichette's disease, and one of them I highly recommend to this day. It's called "You Are Not Alone: Fifteen People with Bichette's Disease." I think that's what it's called by uh, Joanne Zeiss. And the book is, it's excellent. Um, she's written a couple of books about Bichette's. They're all excellent. I recommend them all. Um, but You Are Not Alone, that book, that was the only thing that made me feel not alone um, back in, in those early years after getting diagnosed. Um, another great book is called, simply called Bichette's Syndrome by Dr. Yusuf Yaz Yaz Yaziki. I think that's from, I've never met the man personally, but I, I know a lot of uh, people who have seen him. He's a Bichette specialist. He was located in New York. I heard he moved up to LA. I, I'm not sure about the details, but anyway, Bichette syndrome by Yusuf Yaziki. Um, again, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that name, but it, he's he's considered one of the leading experts in the world about Bichette's disease. 
So, um, you know, if you want to learn about the medical side of, of things, definitely look into that book. Um, if you want to hear personal stories about people living with Bichette's, there's a few good memoirs out there. Um, and once again, I'm going to plug my own thing. I wrote a memoir about living with Bichette's. Um, it's, it, it would have been percolating in my head for many, many years. And I, and I finally finally put it up, you know, wrote, got, it, got it out there and got it published and everything last year. It's called Finding Happiness Through Pain and Embarrassment, My Life with Bichette's Disease, a Memoir by Ellis Michaels. I'll put a link in, a, in the description. And I, I just, I talk about, I don't, I, I don't, I don't censor myself at all. I just, I tell you about it all, the sores on my balls, my mouth, the big cystic acne on my face in high school, all, all the, all the embarrassing shit, it's all in there. So if you, if you want dirt on me, go, go pick up my memoir because it's, it's just packed with all kinds of embarrassing shit about me. But, um, but the underlying theme of the book is that in spite of having this horrible illness, I've lived a fucking awesome life. I've done all kinds of crazy, good, awesome stuff. Traveled the country playing in a band, went to college. Uh, I was an EMT, worked in the ambulance for a while. I, uh, I've traveled all over the world. I, I've, I've, done, I've done so much cool shit um, in spite of having this illness. So I, I, I really tried to make it inspirational. But anyway, if you want my, my story, you can you can pick up my memoir. There's another really great one. I, I rec- it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's sad, it's emotional, but it's... It's real. It's called Ty's story. It was written by a mother about her son who, um, who, who died from uh, from complications related to Bichette's. I believe that um, I believe his death. I could be wrong, but I believe his death was directly related to Bichette's. But that's it's a it's an amazing read. Um, so that as well. Now, if you don't like to read, but you like books, um, my memoir. I know my memoir is out in audiobook format. You can pick that up. Um, narrated by yours truly. I apologize. It is the first and probably last audiobook I will ever record. Um, but I just couldn't picture anyone else. It, I, I, I didn't want it to be in anyone else's voice. I needed it to be in mine so my uh, my shitty sense of humor could come across um, and, and not get lost in the translation. Um, and I don't know about, um, I don't know if I don't know what other books are available about Bichette's on audiobooks. I'm not a, I've never listened to an audiobook in my life. Um, in, spite, in spite of recording one, I've, I've never... Um, it's several of my fiction books other people have narrated. But, um, but anyway, if you like audiobooks, if you can't read, you know, Eye Problems, Common with Bichette's, a lot of people can't read. Um, my memoir is available in audiobook format. Now, for you science nerds like me, um, I cannot recommend PubMed and other um, scientific and medical databases enough. There, there's just there are so many, and don't limit yourself to the United States either, because a lot of there's not a lot of Bichette's research going on in the United States. There's not a lot of funding. Not a lot of people have it. Not a big deal. Um, obviously, a big deal to us who have it and our families and friends, but it's not a big deal to the rest of the world. Nobody gives a shit. Um, it is what it is. However, in other countries, you go to Turkey, you go to Iran and Japan. Some of these other countries have much, much, much higher rates, and they do do a lot of research. Um, and a lot, you know, like Turkish medical journals, Iranian medical journals. Of course, they're in other languages. But I, I've paid to get a lot of studies tra- uh, translated. And my my point is, there's there is a lot of research that's been done on Bichette's, just not domestically in the United States. Um, but if, like I said, if you're a science nerd like me, PubMed, Bichette's, tons, thousands of uh, of results, you find plenty. Now, there are a few Bichette's organizations out there. And they do provide some good information. However, there's two organizations in particular. One of them is in America. It's called the American Bichette's Disease Association. Um, they'll send you some free literature if you, if you write to them or go on their website. And then there's the International Society for Bichette's Disease, the ISBD, um, which is an international organization. Their website, if I, last time I checked, it didn't have a whole lot of information on it, but it had some stuff. Now, with these groups, the ABDA was started by, by someone, if I remember correctly, it was started by someone who had Bichette's. It was started in like many, many decades ago in good faith, but um, like, like all, and I don't, I don't want to go too far down this rabbit hole, but like all medical organizations, the pharmaceutical companies just have their, just pumping money into them. Uh, the, last, the last Bichette's disease um, 
uh, I don't know what you call it, get together or whatever. It was, was host, it was just basically one big drug advertisement is all it was. It was just an opportunity for drug companies to push their new, their new drugs on you. So just keep in mind, these organizations get money from drug companies. So you got you to gotta be careful. Let, uh, take everything they say with a, you know, a grain of salt, especially when it comes to um, particular drugs or whatever. That being said, um, you know, I know there's, there's some very good, well-meaning people at the ABDA, and it was started by some of the intentions of the person who started it, I don't question at all. Um, but that, that sweet, sweet pharmaceutical money finds its way into every medical organization you can think of. It's all the way down to Bichette's. Um, so, you know, the American Heart Association, the American Medical Association, they, they, all of those just drug money, drug money, drug money. It's all... It, it, welcome to America. It, it is what it is. But anyway, um, I just wanted to give that little disclaimer. Um, you know, I'm not saying don't check out ABD, the American Bichette's Disease Association website, or or I, ISBD website. There is good information. There are good people. But just be skeptical. You know, be be aware. Um, and the last the last resource I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna say is you know, once again, some some shameless self-promotion is my website. Um, I, I've written, I don't know, maybe like 10 or 11 really, um, really heavily cited, well thought out articles about Bichette's disease, um, I, just different topics, Bichette's in cannabis, Bichette's in mental illness, um, uh, who is Bichette's named after, what is Bichette's disease, it's just different things like that. I, uh, I you know, I, I, I really dig into the research and and, uh, you know, a lot more than I, I could do here in this video. Uh, my website is ellismichaels.com. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll link it down, down below. Uh, I'll put a link directly to the Bichette's article so you don't have to weed through all the other bullshit on my website that you have no interest in. Um, and, yeah, that's, those, are, those are some, some really, really – those are the best Bichette's resources that I can, I can offer you. I'm sure there's other places out there. There's other, you know – um, other groups or places to, to get information, but for me, these these have been the best, and they're the ones that I recommend the most. I hope that's helpful. I'm Ellis Michaels. Thank you for watching. Be well.